You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. A federal judge has dismissed Bruce Blakeman's lawsuit against the state attorney general relating to his transgender athlete ban. This means the state can now sue the county executive and begin the process to lift the ban. Blakeman's executive order bars transgender female athletes from playing in girls' sports at county parks and facilities. And a Shirley man has pleaded guilty to murder. Prosecutors say Peter Penzinski shot and killed Nathaniel Rodriguez back in 2020. The 24-year-old then attempted to cover it up by setting the victim's body on fire. He's expected to be sentenced to 18 years to life in prison. And a photographer has been arrested for allegedly forcibly touching a teenager. Police say an 18-year-old girl called the cops after a photo shoot with William Keegan. It happened at Flawless Digital Photos in Lindenhurst. The 49-year-old is awaiting to be arraigned. And only in Newsday, Newsday data shows about one in five students were chronically absent in the 2022-2023 school year. The state education department says tens of thousands of Long Island students missed 18 or more days of school. Now these numbers have roughly doubled since the pandemic. And the solar eclipse brought a record number of tourists to New York. Governor Kathy Hochul says nearly one million people visited state parks Jones Beach, Robert Moses, and Sunken Meadow Park each got more than 6,000 visitors. I'm Macy Egland here in Newsday's photo studio. This is where we honor the island's top high school athletes. Carissa Kalman takes us behind the scenes with the All Long Island winter teams. Long Island's top winter athletes came to Newsday to celebrate their successful seasons. We won states and I was like, oh, I don't want to go out any other way. And then like being here too, it's just like, it's really crazy, it's really nice. Athletes selected for Newsday's All Long Island basketball, cheerleading, gymnastics, bowling, fencing, and swimming teams pose for photos together at the Newsday office. You know, a lot of these guys I like, didn't even think I'd ever talk to and now I'm one of them, so it's pretty cool to be up there now. I didn't expect for every sport to be here. I thought it was just going to be a little thing, but it's really cool. I feel like famous. <laughs> I work really hard for this sport, so knowing that it paid off just like really felt good. Since it's my senior year, I just wanted to go out with everything I had and it's just such an accomplishment to be here. The athletes are also getting plaques and a backpack. Congratulations. How does it feel to you when you were told that you were on the first team? Oh, I mean, it felt great. That's really, really cool. I really enjoyed taking all the pictures and all the food that they had back there, too. <laughs> it feels good. Like, I know everybody's proud of me back at Brentwood, so I feel like it's like a great accomplishment. It means everything, honestly. You know, I work really hard for it, and I put a whole lot of dedication to the game. Carissa Kelman, Newsday TV. Congrats to them. Let's read more about Newsday's all Long Island athletes. Go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. We're showing you Long Island's newest all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue. Andy Berlin has today's Feed Me. I am across the street from the Roosevelt Field Mall right now in Carl Place because I'm about to have an epic all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue meal. Korean barbecue is a huge, huge part of Korean cuisine. Dun, dun, dun. And that's why I'm wearing my special Korean barbecue K-pop vest. There's Korean barbecue spots that really focus just on small intestines. Really? Yeah. I've been eating at Korean barbecue restaurants across Long Island, and this family-owned spot is the best all-you-can-eat I've tried. I love that soft to tofu. Their meat selection is pretty impressive. The meat. <laughs> this is the meat dance. My favorite was the thick-cut pork belly. Oh, so good. We also have pork chow, pork skin, and small intestine. But the coolest thing about this place is the cast iron grills, which look like pot lids from an ancient Korean banquet hall. Whenever I went to a Korean restaurant, they only have a small grill. I'm thinking, why don't I just expand the grill in a big size? Don't forget the soju, or in this case, a mak so sa. Rice wine and soju and Sprite. In Korean culture, 
the drinking entirely is part of the respect. Because I am older, her glass can't be above mine. She has to turn her head away from me and then drink it. You know, I grew up eating Korean food, but I didn't really know about the wrap until more recently. When you're kind of eating a different cuisine with your family, you have yeah. this weird, like, different way of accessing it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you, you know the names, but then you're mispronouncing, and yeah, you don't really yeah. know the customs. I will never forget, my mom in elementary school would pack us Korean um, lunch. So I was like, tell my mom, can you pack me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? <laughs> like, I want to be normal. After yeah. that, I picked yeah, the sandwich. But then, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Can you, you know? I need my kimchi. <laughs> I need the rice with the... Now to find out more on all you could eat hotspots, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, well, the Newsday TV video box. All right, so before we take a look at the weather, here's some of the biggest stories of the week. A police chase on the North Fork ended with suspect's car flying off a cliff into Long Island Sound. Now, cops say it all started after Roger Foster slashed a tire in a parking lot. The 56-year-old Florida man already had two warrants out for his arrest. And the Biden administration announced drinking water standards for toxic chemicals that experts say can cause cancer. Utilities will now be required to reduce these chemicals to the lowest level they can be measured. And talk about a solar eclipse. It was a huge hit here with Long Islanders. And now organizations are collecting eclipse glasses to donate to children in South America. Look at a full solar eclipse in October. All right, now let's take a look at your Long Island weather. It is a bit windy. So taking a look, you can see that it's going to be a little bit wet tonight. Well, I guess not anymore to be partly cloudy that cleared up, which is nice. But tomorrow here comes the wind. So taking a closer look at tomorrow, you can see cloud and winds all day long. But if you look at the seven day, I guess that wind pushed out the rain because early in the week it called for rain for Saturday and Sunday. Check it out. Now we are dry. But again, those winds will be winding. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Buva. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend.